One of the most exciting aspects of being a part of the European Innovation Council is the possibility of seeing technologies, technology trends, opportunities for those new technologies of the future and anticipating the next big thing that will change society for the better. And supporting, of course, those technologies all the way from the early stage development until they become a reality at hospitals by the side of the patients who will benefit from them. I'm Henry Claverell. I manage the medical technologies portfolio at the EAC. And today I thought I would share with you one of those opportunities that have appeared in the medical technologies horizon. I'm sure you're familiar at some level with robotics. Robotics has made possible large-scale production of goods in industry. It is helping to achieve more precise and safe surgery in the operating room. Humanoid robotics are performing ever more human-like movements. Who hasn't watched those mesmerizing viral videos of perfect jams and dancing steps by robots? But the revolution of robotics in medicine and science is yet to come, and it's coming very soon. Can you believe that a robot will cure blindness? Let me tell you how. To get started, I will summarize it first. A new generation of intelligent robotic scientists will soon work side by side with human scientists. And as a result, progress will happen in science and medicine much, much, much faster than previously in history. The timeline of scientific and medical discovery will be compressed by a factor of 100 Instead of centuries, we will wait years to find the treatment to the most challenging medical problems. Indeed, if you provide a robot with sufficient intelligence, and of course I'm talking about artificial intelligence, and with a problem that requires only a limited number of experimental tools, lab machines, and these are made available to this robot 24-7, round the clock, it is today possible to turn this robot into an ultra-fast scientist working for humanity, for you, at light speed. Let's take the example of the retina and blindness. Retinas cannot be transplanted. A transplanted retina would need to reconnect to the brain of the patient. But cells in the adult retina are mature. They have already what we call differentiated. The retina is a sandwich of different cell types. For example, the photoreceptors are sensitive to light. These are the pixels in the retinal camera. Amacrine, horizontal, bipolar neurons, they carry out some preliminary processing of the images. And ganglion cells, well, these are very important. They extend the long axons, the long arms, and carry the information from the biological camera, the retina, to the brain. Brain areas like lateral geniculate nucleus, all these cell types used to be very hungry for connections. Yes, they, they are very social, they used to be very social when they were young. Cells in the retina were very, very happy to connect to their neighbors during the earlier stages of development of an embryo. And ganglion cells in particular extended those long axons looking for the right connection partners inside the brain to carry the images from the retina. But when the architecture is finally established, they stop, or at least they slow down the process of changing their connections. And of course, that makes sense. Once the ganglion cells have made the right connections, you don't want to destroy those patterns by changing those connections again. So mature ganglion cells in an adult retina will not regrow. That's why it doesn't make sense to transplant a retina to cure blindness or to try to stimulate a damaged optical nerve to regrow. Adult retinas do not reconnect. But wait a second, when is the robotics part of all this? How can this new generation of robots solve the problem? Well, it turns out that a human scientist, I'm talking about a human scientist, Professor Yamanaka, discovered and was awarded the Nobel Prize for this in 2012, that adult cells can be rejuvenated. They can be reprogrammed. Taking a computer analogy, they can be directed to stop following the program of an adult cell and be forced to go back to reading and executing the program they followed when they were much, much younger. This was achieved thanks to a cocktail of four proteins that, when present around the DNA of the cell, can turn on and off some of the programs executed by the cell. 
with the so-called OSKM cocktail, some cells became progenitor cells, meaning they were ready to restart the process of maturing into adult cells. But unfortunately, the OSKM juice was not a final recipe. It was just a proof of principle. This recipe was not perfect yet. It did not work for all cells. It did not achieve yet ganglion axon growth and reconnection to the brain of a patient. We could say that this four ingredient recipe achieved partial but not perfect or complete reprogramming. Over the past decade, scientists, and I'm talking human scientists again, have slowly, painfully refined the recipes for reprogramming. But we're still not there today. We still have not perfected the recipe enough to make ganglion cells of our retina reconnect to the brain. If this was possible, eye transplantation would become a reality. Blindness could be defeated, you know, in many, in many cases, not just by transplantation. And while we are moving towards the right direction, this is happening very slowly. Until recently, fully automating the discovery of reprogramming factors has not been really possible. Human scientists start by reading papers, extracting a description of the processes going on in the cell. Then they try to run experiments, testing new programming recipes, and then write a scientific paper, an article, for other human scientists to read and continue with a new iteration of this cycle of discovery. One iteration, as I was describing it, could take four or five years. It's a full doctoral thesis, for example. But soon, it will be possible to fit the scientific literature to an artificial intelligence engine that will analyze the text and suggest various experiments to refine the reprogramming cocktails and then test these recipes with single experiments, simple experiments, on a cell culture dish. Then, autonomously, the system will analyze the results of the experiment and will generate text, again, new publications, describing those results in a way that could be read by humans, but also by other robot scientists. We are very aware these days, in January 2023, of the new developments in natural language processing, but also in aut on automation of large experiments in health tech, in health technologies. When we close the loop so that a robotic scientist can complete the full discovery cycle, of course, under the high level supervision of human scientists, then the recipes for reprogramming will be perfected very quickly, not in centuries, but in years. To some extent, we will have found the way to compress the timeline of medical research and bring solutions to patients 100 times faster than we have seen so far. This is the type of cutting edge technology we're thinking about at the EAC. So stay tuned. I'm sure we're going to see wonderful and exciting progress in the field in the coming years. And don't forget to follow also other technological areas supported by colleagues in the agency. We're all together as a society in an exciting trip of scientific discovery. Thank you.